guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell here and welcome to the Go Home Show on the road to Fastlane for our final pay-per-view before we head to WrestleMania. We've got an action-packed show for you this week, 17 segments, 5 pre-show matches as we hopefully give you an idea of where we're going towards for not only Fastlane but also WrestleMania. We'll also have a rundown of the card which is booked in so far for Fastlane and of course there will be some hints towards WrestleMania, but as I say, a lot more of that build will come tomorrow's, uh, sorry, not tomorrow's show, next week's show, as we head to WrestleMania. It's not really much to add, I'm not going to show you the history because there was um, some folk book that are in next storyline, so we'll keep that quiet. But I say it's a decent show, hopefully this week, hopefully get a good rating, and uh, hopefully get some people over as we carry on the road to Fastlane. So if, if I were to do it, Let's run the show. So it's in the Gallon Center in California. Only 8,512 in attendance, which is disappointing. You expect a bigger crowd than that. First pre show match. And a match that had some good action and average heat with Chris Jericho defeat Fandango in 9 minutes and 18 by pinfall. A code breaker. Solid C63. Jericho needs some momentum behind him and he gets revenge for that WrestleMania defeat. Looking they're all happy with, it's really just the low momentum uh, declining physical ability of Chris Jericho. That are the negatives there. Next up in an awful match that was completely devoid of heat, Bailey defeats Emma in 731 by pinfall with a rose plant. E plus 31, I don't even know what a rose plant is, don't, don't know if she's used that finisher, you guys can let me know, but it, the main thing is it gets her over and she improves her technical skills. Like at victory. Negatives so yeah, there, mostly for Emma. So hopefully we can give Bailey a little push before her proper debut. Next up in a bit they had some solid in ring action but not much in the way of heat. Eric Rowan defeats Kane in 738 with some greetings from the north. D plus 53 again just booking Eric Rowan to look strong. He also improves his technical skills so I'm quite happy with that. And the dirt sheet has negatives for holding back. For both gentlemen, poor Gimmick and Kane, low momentum for Eric Rowan, and of course that dreaded physical ability that is declining of Kane. And I managed to add some good action, but not much in the way of heat, which is happening with so many matches, just because they're really just helping people go over, and our storylines are obviously for more main event ready guys that are going to be really pushed. Uh, I tend not to run too many storylines, just enough to get by. It's something I'm going to work on, and hopefully will storylines for everybody. Once TW 2016 hits, but we have bad news Barrett and Sheamus defeating Gable and Jordan in 902 when Sheamus defeated Chad Gable with a Celtic Cross or the Bro Kick, whatever one you want to choose he's using. C minus 57 does its job. I wanted to see how Gable and Jordan did against an over tag team. Lots of improvements here t t uh, technical skills for Sheamus, rumble skills for Barrett. And Barrett and Gable also improving performance skills, so that's a positive in that um, uh, that light. Actually, very few negatives there, which I'm really happy with. So hopefully, we might see a Gable and Jordan's push before the series ends. Of course, the series will be ending at WrestleMania, because hopefully, not long after, we'll have TW 2016. And our main event pre-show match, and a match that had some good action and average heat. Ricochet and Randy Orton defeat R Truth and Stardust in 1018 when Randy Orton defeats Stardust with a pinfall via the RKO. C plus 66, it's okay, Randy Orton is really over. There were no skill improvements to speak of. And the dirt sheet has a few negatives there, but at the end of the day, it was just to give Orton and Ricochet a bit of momentum going forward. Let's we'll start the show. So, Actually, end up starting the show with Randy Orton in the ring. We'll just say he stayed out there to cut the promo to start the show. But we start the show with I Hear Voices in My Head, the Apex Predator, the Viper. Randy Orton has entered the ring and he looks pissed. Randy Orton says, In case you have been living under a rock for the past few weeks, you'll know exactly why I'm here. With a microphone in my hand and why I'm extremely pissed off. Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar and the Authority. Now, I've had problems with the authority in the past, and I get that. But it's the fact that someone, some snakes like Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, decide to get involved in my affairs and cost me my opportunity to main event WrestleMania and go for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. 
Now I don't take kindly to stuff like that, and people know I don't play well with others. So I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Heyman, Lesnar, get your asses out here, because this Viper is ready to sting the beast. So Randy's pissed, a good promo from him, a very good B plus 85. I can do with those ratings at the end of the show rather than the start. This starts off the start, you know, a very good positive way to the to Raw. The Bork Smash storyline has advanced with this segment. No negatives. Perfect. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Randy Orton. It's Paul Heyman. Sir, how dare you threaten me, Brock Lesnar, or any of the authority? What Brock Lesnar has simply done was best for business. Now Randy, before you start any more of your threats this evening, I can confirm that Brock Lesnar isn't here at present and ensure that Brock Lesnar remains unscathed for his big match not only tonight, but also this Sunday. I have been asked to ensure that security ejects you from the arena. So security, please eject this man from the building. Six security officers arrive on the stage and they head to the ring. They try to reason with Randy Orton before he takes two of them out with an RKO. He tries to take a third out with an RKO, but one of the officers manages to grab his arm and cuff him. He tries to fight them off, while Paul Heyman laughs in the face of Randy Orton. And he simply says, ha 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 ha, good luck getting to WrestleMania, Randy. So a C plus 67, Orton is off to jail, out of the premises. And it leaves him a bit of a dilemma. What is next for him on the road to WrestleMania? In our first match on the main Raw show, in a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat, Dolph Ziggler defeats Neville in 8.37 with the zigzag. C-57, simple match, putting Dolph over, gaining him some momentum before Fastlane. A few negatives there, but overall it's two mid-card talents. And then it's been announced that it will be Ricochet versus Dolph Ziggler this Sunday at Fastlane. Disappointing, only gets a D plus 49, but we have to build up the High Flyer Ricochet. Next up in a match that had some good action and average heat, we had Cesaro defeat Kevin Owens in 9.54 by pinfall via the neutralizer. C63, so that's pretty okay, we'd prefer that to get up to the B minuses, but we'll take it. But I see storyline advances, and Kevin Owens was off his game. There were no skill improvements to speak of. Negatives here, quite a few for Kevin Owens and Cesaro. Actually, I may look up and change both their characters. So that is Cesaro and Owens. Note to self, remember that. With Randy Orton being escorted backstage, or sorry, away by security, we see Brock Lesnar appear backstage on Monday Night Raw. So Brock is in the building. And that just get a B minus 76. I was kind of hoping that'd be a little bit higher than that, but that's what it is. Beast Incarnate is on the premises. Next up in the match, that's some good action and average cheat. With John Cena defeat Braun Strowman in 750 by countout. A C minus 58. Just putting Strowman with as many over guys as possible, and as many guys that could maybe teach him a couple of skills. Unfortunately, no skill improvements in this occasion. Few negatives again for Braun Strowman, but hopefully we can get him over before Mania. That's the plan to get him over before WrestleMania. We're then backstage with the COO of the WWE, Triple H. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce two matches for WWE Fastlane. One where we will see the WWE United States Championship on the line as Finn Balor takes on Alberto Del Rio. In addition to this, we will also have a WWE Intercontinental Championship match as Kevin Owens defends his championship against Cesaro. So just Triple H, small video there saying that is best for business. So just putting some titles on the line to give us some matches for Fastlane. B-72, the US storyline has advanced and I'm quite happy with that by Triple H. Unfortunately, putting them in this match did not help. In a match that had some good action and average heat, Finn Balor in the New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston defeated Alberto Del Rio and the City Cowboys, Robert Roode and James Storm. In 9 minutes and 12 when Finn Balor defeated James Storm by pinfall with a flying double footstomp, following interference from Xavier Woods. 
So C minus 58 is showing that the new day are still in contention for the tag titles. Xavier does some good work at ringside, we continue the two storylines. Kofi is the only one that improves a little bit of rumble skills. Just disappointed that it was as low as a C minus 58. We do see quite a few negatives there. So hopefully we can build up uh, a few of those guys for Mania. Next up in a match that saw some good action and average heat. Rusev defeats Rob Van Dam at 5.39. C63 again just making the Bulgarian Brute look as dominating as possible. And there were no skill improvements to speak of. Negatives there, both guys holding back, the poor chemistry, uh, sorry, poor chemistry from R uh, RVD, declining physical ability for RVD, and consistency of Rusev, the length of the match, and yet again another poor gimmick. Next up in a match that had solid in ring action but non existent crowd heat, Becky Lynch and Charlotte defeated Tamina and Sasha Banks in 8 minutes and 8, when Charlotte defeated Tamina by pinfall. This got a D44. Really just building up some momentum for Charlotte going into the match on Sunday. No skill improvements. Um, surprisingly, only two negatives for Tamina. I thought it would be a lot more than that. But overall, we're still building up our Divas division. We then head to Michael Cole at the commentary booth. He says, oh my god, we have massive news. Next week live on Monday Night Raw, the boss is back. The man himself, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, will be in attendance. What will the main man that's in charge do that could affect Wrestlemania? Now this is going to be a real interesting storyline. Whether it pays off remains to be seen, but it's going to be something very, very different. But B81, no skill improvements, and the dirt sheet just is a segment that was limited for being shot. Bonus points if you can guess what the storyline is going to be with Vince. I don't think MD will get it. Next up and about the feature, great action and a good crowd, Daniel Bryan defeated Bray Wyatt in 1420 when Bray Wyatt was disqualified when Luke Harper ran in and attacked Daniel Bryan. Very solid B78. The Where's Nicky storyline has advanced. Daniel Bryan improves rumble skills. Bray Wyatt improving performance skills. Negatives here. Disappointingly stamina for Bray Wyatt. I mean, I think he's done okay in the long matches. Poor gimmicks for both and a cold crowd as well. Hmm, not great. Harper then attacks Brian post match and uh, they attack him before John Cena and Kane make the save. The Wyatts retreat to the ramp where Bray Wyatt decides to cut a promo. Oh, John, John, John. It's all about you, man. You can't just stay away. You gotta be everybody's hero. Mr. Hustle, loyalty, and respect. Or oh, respect this. Sunday, you bring your army and I'll bring my family. And we will clash and we will rid you from the WWE forever. You see, you're just a disease. You're infecting all of these no-hopers with beliefs, when in reality they should all tremble in fear. Of the face of fear, the man of a million nightmares, Bray Wyatt. Then he says, follow the buzzards. So really just Bray Wyatt threatening John Cena, just saying, please leave. For the fit enough of him. A solid B80 segment there. The wears Nicky story in advances. No worker improvements uh, in it. And that's with negatives as well, so if you have the net positives, good gimmick and momentum on Wyatt, you're talking a possible B+, plus, hopefully, but I'm happy with that. Then we have a vignette, working in the rafters, a vigilante stands. What does this mean? Who knows? But B80, and a good promo there, a good vignette there, limited, so it could be even higher, but overall, I'm quite happy with that. And about the featured great action and a good crowd, Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins defeated Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns in 12.26 when Seth Rollins defeated Dean Ambrose by pinfall following a turn from Paul Heyman. Just basically Paul Heyman, obviously I still had to turn him heel in the game so I thought let's do it here. Um, and I thought let's go for it now. Uh, unfortunately only a C plus 68. Paul Heyman did some good work at ringside. Uh, the fans are really, really bored by the hint of Paul Heyman heel turn, so maybe should have turned them earlier. My bad. Uh, there was a lack of psychology, so it's disappointing that all four of these guys had no psychology. Uh, work improvements, Lesnar improving performance skills. 
and really the only negatives was the psychology, the crowd mood, and everybody holding back. So I think more so this gets really negative because of the psychology, and I think overall, if it was based on overness, it would be a good match. But we'll handle the turn. Holy shit, it was 27 segments, that's probably why they were a bit pissed off. Um, the turn had been foreshadowed for so long, the fans actually had grown bored, and it, ah, that's cool. So, uh, not the greatest turn, but it did go pretty well, but maybe I should have done it a lot earlier, but of course, the fans said it was too early to start with. That's what it is. Let's just hope we get a good final segment, which can save the show. And we do. Seth Rollins has done it, he has scored the shock victory over Dean Ambrose, and it's thanks to the massive assist from Paul Heyman. He celebrates while Reigns and Lesnar just continue to go at it. Rollins then decides to basically bolt up the ramp because he wants nothing to do with this massive brawl, as he's got a title match this Sunday. Ambrose has decided to chase him after the way the match finished. Meanwhile, Lesnar and Reigns are levelling each other with lefts and rights, and it's a proper slugfest. Basically, it's much better than the tug of war over the title. I promise. They back each other out of the corner and continue to just swing for each other until Roman goes for the Superman punch but Lesnar ducks it and he picks up Roman Reigns and nails him with the F5. Best for business bitch says Brock Lesnar, will Roman Reigns make it to Wrestlemania or will his detour at the fast lane be the end of him this Sunday? So a good way to finish the show, nice little brawl. B plus 85, the World Heavyweight Championship storyline has continued with this. And all positives there. Hopefully it gives us a better rating, we'll find out. Hmm, a B minus 73, it does lose a pop in 16 but gain in 11. I think it's a really good show, and all honestly, it's just a disappointing main event. If you switch Brian and, uh, and Wyatt with him, I think you get a much better rating. It's just one of those things, some matches don't click, especially the lack of psychology. So um, it just remains to be seen how stuff goes down the line. So we'll carry on. I so said we're going to run through the card for Fastlane. As I say, with the road to WrestleMania now firmly in full swing uh, over the next five weeks, we're certainly going to have uh, a lot of surprises, a lot of stuff you maybe expect, some you don't expect. Uh, I, I aim to be different for the real life WWE, you know. For enough Roman in the main event going for the title might be similar, but... I'm going to try and swerve people. Adam Rose has gone from the WWE, his contract expired, and I thought, well, I've jobbed him out enough. He never really offered us anything. Uh, his popularity pretty much stayed a bit the same, but he is like 36, and as I say, I'm doing the same for like another month, so no worries there. Um, quite have a look at our emails. Adam Rose is gone, and the ratings are down a little bit, which is disappointing. Basically, as I say, we'll try and run these contracts out just so I've got less shows to worry about. As I said, I do the main event, SmackDown, and uh, Superstars, but it's really just to get people over, working skill sets and stuff like that. Um, still should be way ahead of national, so that'll be fine. I don't think we'll ever reach international, but as what it is. Hopefully we can start improving. And no more thing to really cover is just the cab for Fastlane, which is obviously this Sunday, so let's crack into it. We have... For the United States Championship, we have Alberto Del Rio challenging Finn Balor. For the Intercontinental Championship, we have Cesaro challenging Kevin Owens. For the Divas Championship, we have Sasha Banks challenging Charlotte. We have a 4 on 3 handicap match of Daniel Bryan, John Cena and Kane against the Wyatt family. Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan and Braun Strowman. We have Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins tangling for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. We have a match between Ricochet and Dolph Ziggler. Can Roman Reigns look strong going into WrestleMania? He has the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar in a massive match. Can he overcome basically the demons of not beating Lesnar last year? Obviously losing to uh, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, but can he prove he can beat Brock Lesnar? That all comes to head this Sunday. And then the tag titles are on the line as we see three teams in action for the tag titles as the City Cowboys defend against Bad News Barrett and Sheamus and the New Day. So that is the card for Fastlane. If you'd like to put your predictions in the comments section below as well as who you think the Vigilante could be. Although I think that kind of gives it away. 
looking at this, looking at these predictions as well, I don't just want your predictions for fast lane. If MD's got any predictions for a WrestleMania card, then let me know what you think as well in the comment section. But I've got a lot of ideas that'll be coming over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm literally at the stage where I'm booking it like a bit in advance, but I'm booking it all back to back so the ideas flow a bit more smoother. Instead of going up oh, a week later, oh crap, it was the idea I had last week, so everything links and we get the best WrestleMania card as possible. So it's good ideas I've got at the moment, whether it transitions into a good rating remains to be seen. But apart from that guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. As I say, any comments regarding predictions, and just generally any thoughts in the series, any thoughts on how you're enjoying TW, you're looking forward to two, uh, 2016. As I say, by the time this video is up, you know, at least we'll be a good wee bit into the developer's diary. So what's your favourite um, thing so far? Let me know as well. Apart from that guys, thanks for watching. And if you want to speak more about TW, you can hit me up on Twitter at 21 Maxwell. But thanks for watching guys. See you later. Bye bye.